And for the reading of God's word, the scripture is going to come from Psalms 34, verses 1 through 4. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. May the Lord bless the hearers and most of all the doers of his holy and divine word. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Right. How many of you know that you're free this evening? Right. I want you to look at your neighbor, give him a big high five and say, I'm free. Come on. 
this brother and I have decided to fast for service. Not intentionally, but we don't do well after we eat. <laughs> so y'all pray for us. Amen. So it's good to see all of you. But I am particularly uh, want to uh, say that we thank God for all these preachers on the pulpit. Amen. 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 I also want to acknowledge all of the ecclesiastical officers of both the churches Amen. that are here today. It is good to see all of you. But I am particularly happy to see my friend um, who is celebrating seven years. Amen. Anytime we call him, he shows up. Amen. And he leaves us better. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Stanley Murray, for your ministry. Now, and some of you clap because you misinterpreted my epistemological statement. I said thank you for your ministry, not for the church. Amen, someone. So can, can we try it again? Thank you, Pastor Stanley Murray, for your ministry.
Today I'm somewhat feeling stressed. Share with the church this morning that I need prayers. But right now I really need prayers. And uh, the reason I need it is because uh, when I came into the church, we were greeted by some very fine people. You have some very fine people. Amen. 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 And then, Amen. Uh, Amen. I'm not trying to pick on nobody. But as I came into the church, one of the brothers paused, and I wondered what gave him reason to pause. And I could not help from observing the queenly wife. And it was her that gave him pause. And, but I heard him say something that kind of threw me because I'll explain in a moment. He stopped and he kind of, I'm, I'm, what's the gyration for? I mean, this is the first lady. Uh, there, there's always a measure of respect because she's an extension of the person who's the poor man. And we have a prodigious poor man in the house. But then he mentioned a shirt. I was <laughs> <laughs> amen, amen, amen. I said something about she's wearing her Patriot shirt. <laughs> so instantly, I realized that this is Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> Now, I have to be, I have to be transparent with you. I, I want to know if you go to my Facebook page, you'll see that I've been protesting the NFL. So I'm somewhat under some pressure. You all know? start to feel me now. Are you getting me? Because I do understand that there's a certain amount of time allotted for preaching. Amen. 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 That's every Sunday. But now it's the afternoon. Amen. I don't know what time the Super Bowl starts. <laughs> Like a and I know some of you that if he talks this slow, it's going to be a while. I'm glad there's some righteous folks in the house. Because they say, take your time. I hope it means that when I'm into an hour. <laughs> but um, seriously, we are, we're excited about being here to celebrate with this first family. We love them. And, and I have some things to say that we're going to get out of the way. We're going to try to remain conscientious because in the event that Pastor mentioned my name again to come back, I don't want y'all to start having negative flashbacks. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Join me in the reading, the looking, the book there. It's Ecclesiastes. I'm sorry, Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 22. And I was tempted to read all the verses, but let me read two verses. The last two. And I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30 and 31. I look for someone who might rebuild the walls of righteousness that guards the land. I searched for someone to stand in the gap in the walls so I wouldn't destroy the land, but I found none. So I will pour my fury on them, consuming them with fire, the fire of my anger. 
I will heap upon their heads the full penalty for all their sins. I, the sovereign Lord, have spoken this. King James Version, or the New King James Version, said, So I sought for men among them who would stand in the gap and make up the wall on behalf of the land, but I found no one. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to I want to teach on for just a few moments this title. I want to teach on gap standard. Oh wow. Amen. And if you don't mind, could you repeat after me? We come to talk about, we come to talk about gap, standard. gap standard. Amen. Someone standing in the gap. And I want to just talk about the gap standard. If you don't mind for just a moment, bow your heads with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you. And we thank you, God, for what you will reveal through these words. I want to ask now, God, that you let me decrease, that Christ may increase, and get all the glory, the honor, and the praise. We ask these things, God, for your glory to the end, that God, your name will be praised, the people edified, and the devil terrified. Do what you must. We are submitted and yielded to you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The gap standard. So I saw for a man among them that would make up a wall, stand in the gap before me. On behalf of the land that I would not, should not destroy, but I found no one. The gap standard. You, you are not the boss of me. It's a phrase I believe you have probably heard, or maybe you have used it yourself. Well, the phrase, I may say, has seemingly become somewhat of an anthem with individuals and groups within our society who fight for their right to choose. It is a choice to do everything, anything, or nothing. This kind of independent to each his own mentality is already described in the book that bears one of the author's name, the book of Judges. You have probably read these words. Everyone did what was right in their own sight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now clearly, where everyone is doing what is right in his own sight stands to reason that anything and everything goes. Question. Ask yourself, what does a society look like where anything goes? At this moment in this gathering, you're not required to give an answer. You're not because God already provides it. And here it is. God, El Olam, summons Ezekiel, that prophet, and says to him, I want you to go to Jerusalem and cry out to it. And that's a sign to where Anything is going on there. And here's what God had to say concerning what was going on. He says, you are murdering one another. You worship idols. You treat fathers and mothers with no respect. You prey on foreigners. In other words, you extort them. You oppress the widows and the orphans. You despise what is holy. Yes. You have those sleeping, watch this, with their father's wives. Mm -hmm. You even have those sleeping with their daughter-in-laws. Mm -hmm. You have those who even have raped their own sister. Mm -hmm. You have those who hire hitmen to take people out. Mm -hmm. And there is an ongoing disrespect among you all. Wow. 
in regards to God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jerusalem had become a society where anything goes. It angered God that Jerusalem had become a city where anything was going on. And they were supposed to be the people of God. Get this. While God certainly was angry with the people, he was all the more angry with the leaders. Mm, come on. And here's why. He knew that God expected his leaders to know his law as well as encourage his people to follow it. He also knew that God expected his leaders to correct his people when they were going astray. They would become an example for others to pattern themselves after. However, the leaders of Israel priests, they were violating the laws and they themselves were teaching the people to do wrong. The prophets, because they were in league and in collusion with the other leaders, they prophesied lies in order to cover what everyone was doing wrong. And the prince, the government that is, the leaders, they were scheming together to figure out how to get people to pay them extra money. Take it together. They were all leading the people to go away and astray from God. And God was angry and was ready to pour out his wrath and indignation upon all of them. God was mad. God was ticked off. God said, I've had enough. But, but, somebody say but. but. But you know God is so loving. <laughs> God is so long-suffering. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. And God is a God of second chance. Amen. Amen. Stay with me, stay with me. Thank you. Here's some proof. But God was ready to pour out his wrath upon Jerusalem. Because they were killing one another, extorting, lying, manipulating, cheating, doing all things. The Bible said, though, that God would spare them mm -hmm. if he could just find one, one man one. Come on. to Come on, stand now. in the gap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not a home, just one man. What does it mean to stand in the gap? It means to be able to look at a society and tell them when they've gone too far. It means that they were willing to give up what's their comfort zone. All right now. Stand up for God and tell the people that you need to repent, you're going wrong, and God don't like it. And the Bible said God looked for a man to stand in the gap. But he found nobody. No one was willing. But if he could just find one man, not two, not three. Mm -hmm. Just one man. It would avert national disaster everywhere. We come get you. <laughs> if you are born again in the Holy Spirit field, yes. all right, all right. you're able to spiritually discern that today's society looks a whole lot like Jerusalem Amen. in Ezekiel's day. Amen. Just about anything is going on. In fact, what some people are doing today make Jerusalem look innocent. In fact, because we are in church, we can't name some of the things that's going on in our society. But anything just about goes. And God is angry. And God will act. However, we have another but. <laughs> you see, then as well as now, he looks for a man to stand in the gap. And he does not, he does not have to be a perfect man. He does not have to have it all together. He just looks for a man. One who will stand in the gap. 
Someone who will tell folks when they've gone too far. Someone who doesn't mind standing up, crying loud, spirit not. Someone who has the conviction that for God I live and for God I die. Someone who's not scared of folks, but more scared of God. And don't mind telling it like to these. Amen, somebody. God is looking for a man to stand in the gap. And I believe this afternoon we have a man who has been standing in the gap. Thank you, Pastor Stanley Murray, for standing, standing in the gap. Some folks don't know how they have been blessed because you have been standing in the gap. There's some folks who God, if had not the man of God been standing in the gap, if you think you had some bad times, and if you think you had some hard times, and if you think you had some difficult times, I saw how to tell you, it could have been worse. But somebody was standing in the gap for you. So that when God saw Stanley Murray standing in the gap, God had a second chance moment. Stay with me. Thank God for Pastor Stanley Murray. Thank God that you have been a gap stander. That's what I come to talk about this afternoon. A gap stander. Here's a question for all of us today. What do gap standers do when they're standing in the gap? Yeah, yeah. But you're just not standing there trying to look bad with your with yourself, trying to look like you all that. What what does the gap stander do? When the gap stander stands in the gap. Well, let me help you since you ask. The gap stander stands there to intercede on your behalf. To intercede means you are pleading on behalf of someone else. It means that you are praying for somebody. Who won't even pray for themselves. Who don't have the common sense to go and pray for themselves. The gap standard is making a case. That God, I know that this is what you ought to do. But I'm asking you to have mercy. That's the gap standard. Gap standard is praying for you. James 5, 17 reminds us that the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous man avails it much. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and 1 declares, I urge you that you are to make prayers and supplication with incession with thanksgiving. These biblical mandates we see is applicable for all believers. Well, let me tell you something. It will be taken all the more serious by those who are gap standers. Gap standers are different from those who just pray. You, you, you hear what I say? A gap standard is very different from those who are just praying. Here's why. The gap standing is cognizant of the fact that when they took the position to stand in the gap, they entered the hottest areas of spiritual warfare. You see, understand, say, spiritual warfare is always heated. But there are just some areas where it's hot. Because that's where the devil 
is doing his biggest and greatest work to bring the greatest amount of damage. And so, person standing in the gap, someone who's catching more heat than you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Person standing in the gap is going through more than you're going through. Because you're standing in the gap for you. We see here in the text in Ezekiel, the nation is experiencing a full frontal attack from the devil. Mm. That he has influenced them to do all the murdering, the killing, all the things that they're doing that is wrong. Yeah. And while they're doing all of that, God wants to destroy them. Yeah. God said, wait a minute. Yeah. If I can just find somebody stand in the gap, they will avert National disaster. Yeah, yeah. Now, I want you to understand something, my brothers and my sisters. Their departure, when they left God's righteousness, mm -hmm. decided to do their own thing. Yes. Uh -huh. It made them vulnerable to demonic attacks. Uh -huh. And every time the enemy launched an attack against them, it was causing irreversible damage. Uh -huh. Thankfully, God loves his people enough to filter just how much the devil allows to happen in their life. And what I love about God also is that whatever damage God allows the devil to do, that he is enough God that he can fix it. He's enough God. Amen. Amen. That God can fix it. Yes, he can. In fact, the only reason why some of you are here Amen. is because God has fixed it for you. Watch this. It is here in Ezekiel chapter 22, 30. God, God determined the deeds of the devil who go no further. And so God puts out an APB. On behalf of people who didn't know they were in trouble. And so God said, I just need someone to stand in the gap. So that as they are interceding on their behalf, that what I want to release, I won't do it. Watch this thing, watch this thing. The gap standing, the Bible says to make a hedge. God, call, God called and said, I need someone to make a hedge about them. And as I was reading the text with fresh eyes, remember all of the homiletical training, all of the training about uh, epistemology, remember all of those training. Here God spoke and reminded me that when the nation of Israel would serve him, that God already calls a hedge of protection mm -hmm. to be about them. And as long as they stay between the lines, yes, yes. they were protected. Uh -huh. But if they went outside of the line, uh -huh. they needed additional protection. Yes, yes. And so now God says, I'm looking for a man. Not to keep them between the lines, but to stand between the lines for them. So whatever is going to happen to them has to first go to that man to get to them in order that they might be destroyed. But I stop by to tell you, ain't everybody signing up for the job? Come on, come on. Amen. Amen. Take your time, bitch. Take your time. Because you know. When you ain't right with God, yeah, yeah, yeah. the last person you're going to call on uh -huh. is the one you ain't right with. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So somebody has to call him up for you. I said, Lord, have mercy 
on sister so and so. Lord, have mercy on brother so and so. And I don't know how many times the gap stander has to stand there feeling the weight of what you've been doing, but has to call, Lord, have mercy. That's the gap stander. As long as he's standing in the gap, God sees the gap stand. Every time God looks around and says, I'm ready. No, I can't do it because the gap stand. Standing right there. And I grew up in a church where I needed some folks to stand in the gap for me. Because I know that I was a wretch on God. And I know I was sneaky and tricky and I... I know I was sick and I know I did some things that people found out the preacher did that look at me in a different light. But can I say this? I remember the songs of the church. And one of the songs that sticks out to me said, somebody prayed for me. Had me on their mind. But I'm glad that they didn't just have me on their mind, they did something. They took some time and prayed for me. And I like the refrain because the refrain says, I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. I believe somebody sitting under the sound of my voice is the product and beneficiary of prayer. Because had not somebody stayed in the gap and prayed for you, the devil could have taken you out long ago. But you ought to tell God, God, thank you that somebody prayed for me. Somebody had me on their mind and they took some time and called my name. And I wonder if there's anybody in the house who don't mind waving your hand to let somebody know that I'm a beneficiary of prayer. Somebody tell me, prayer changed things. But I've lived long enough now. I would have to fight my own battles, my spiritual warfare. I'm glad I know how to call on God for myself. But I'll stop out and tell you, I still need somebody. You don't mind getting on your knees and calling God for me. And I'll stop by and tell you the reason why you need to get in the church and get connected and get on the right preacher. Because every now and then, you're going to need somebody to stand in the gap for you. My God, my God. Thank you, Pastor for being a gap stander. Let's not keep it too long. I want to share one more thing with you about what the gap stander does when you're standing in the gap. Gap stander is not only standing in the gap making intercession for you. But there's something else Stand is doing on your behalf. I hope you know that when the gap stand is standing there, the gap stand is making improvement on your behalf. He's a home improvement contractor. Look at this what I'm saying. I just didn't make that up. There's proof in the text. Watch this thing. It is here in the 22nd chapter. We are afforded insight into what is the eternal conscience of our God concerning Jerusalem. It was God, not Ezekiel, that called him and told him the nation is broken. People are living sloppy. Their internal policies and practices have placed them on a path that is only leading to more destruction. Devastation and death is certain. So God spoke this word to the prophet. He says to them, says to him, go to Jerusalem and let them know 
They want to be spared from my wrath. If you want to be reconciled and be restored to my good graces. If you want to be saved. If you want to not experience impediment. I need to find a man. To stand in the gap for you. God said. He looked. He looked for a man. Just one man. God looking. But here's a sad commentary. The Bible said. He found no one. They tried to tell me all the men were sad. All the men was no good. And God couldn't find one. I hear sisters say they're looking for some men. It's a real man. It's amazing that it's not only women looking for men, but God is looking for men. Stand it again. God said, I'm looking for a man, but, but I could find no one. The Bible said, he had to pour out his wrath on Jerusalem. Now to be sure, things did not go well for the people in that day. Because there wasn't one man that could stand in the gap. Well, what did we do? Well, let's fast forward to today. Come on with it. <laughs> the society is still engaged in all kind of crazy stuff. Still practicing some of the self same things that was going on back then. People just off the chain. Doing what is right in their own sight. Whether they know it or not, God is still angry. He's still disturbed. And God is still offended. By all accounts, based on that, our society should have been wiped out. Wiped out. Because of what is going on today. God should have already poured out his wrath on the nation. Mm -hmm. But he hasn't. Amen. He hasn't. The question is why? why? Why, God, have you not done to us like you did to Jerusalem? Mm. And I believe the answer is this. There is a man. <laughs> There's a man standing in the gap. Yes, yes. He is praying yes, yes. every day. Yes, yes. Lord, have mercy. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I know we messed up, yes. but you know, God, we don't think right half the time. <laughs> we won't do right the other half the time. Uh -huh. Even when we know to do right, come on, come on. we still mess it up. So Lord, have mercy, have mercy Lord. on us. Yes. And while he has to stand Sunday after Sunday, oh. remind folks of how good God has been. Yes. So that the goodness of God might change some hearts. Yes. There are still some folks sitting looking with attitudes. <laughs> leaving with attitudes. Yes. Walking around with all kinds of yeah. And it makes the preacher man have to say, Lord, have mercy. Because I know that your life been jacked up, torn up, and messed up. They fell for the okie dokie from the devil. The devil told them that if they took this, they'd feel better. Only to find out that feeling better for a moment don't make it better. And so they fell into that trap. And they fell into the trap that if I get him or get her, 
my life was going to be better. And after they got him, or after they got her, they came to the preacher and said, I need you to pray for me. Because he won't act right. She won't do right. And the preacher has to remind you. Did I not tell you that if it were not in God, you'd be unequally yoked? I know they look fine. And I know that they look sharp. But every day you're crying now. When I told you to leave them alone. And so now he's got to pray. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. I got a witness. Standing in the gap because somebody won't listen. Standing in the gap because somebody won't obey God. Standing in the gap because somebody think that they can do it their way and get away with it. Standing in the gap because somebody won't listen for the word of God. Standing in the gap because somebody's about to lose their home. Standing in the gap because somebody's about to lose all their money. Standing in the gap because somebody is about to get in trouble. Standing in the gap, showing up to school to let the teacher know he ain't all that bad. Standing in the gap because somebody done messed up and they're down in the jail. They ain't all that bad. Standing in the gap. Now I'm so glad that he's been standing in the gap. Now I'm so glad that all that he's been doing, God has been able to bless you. You ought to bless God for the man of God who's been standing, standing in the gap. When our nation is still in trouble, we've got all kind of problems. We need someone who can stand in the gap eternally. So that when the pastor hands are too weak, when the weight gets too heavy, we need someone else standing in the gap. Someone who never gets tired. Someone who never gets weak. Someone who never gives up on the job. Someone who don't let church folks get the worst of them. Someone who don't mind taking a licking and keep on going. And I stop by to ask the question, do you know his name? Do you know his name? Do you know his name? Because if you know his name, I stop by to tell you, he's been standing in the gap. Not one year or two years. He's been standing in the gap for 2,000 years. Ain't he all right? Yeah, he's been standing in the gap. Somebody said he was standing in the gap. Somebody said the one that's been standing in the gap. He's a friend that's sticking closer than any brother. The one that's been standing in the gap with food on my table, clothes on my back. The one that's been standing in the gap, he makes a way out of nowhere. The one that's standing in the gap is one who shows up when I call him in the midnight. The one who's been standing in the gap, he makes a way out of nowhere. Somebody said, what's his name? What's his name? Somebody said his name is Jesus. They hung him high and they stretched him out. He died on the Lord of the Cross. Stay there all night, Friday night. Stay there all night, Saturday night. But that's not how the story is. For hey, Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. So the man may stand, standing in the gap is able to stand in the gap because Jesus is holding him up to stand in the gap. So when you praise God for him, you're giving God praise. Is there anybody here who don't mind waving your hand to let somebody know 
I appreciate the death standard. Thank you for praying for me. Thank you for improving my situation. Thank you for believing in me. Thank you for not giving up on me. Thank you for standing in the gap. Thank you for calling his name. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? And you know he's all right. Say yeah. 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 He's all right. assembling of yourselves Amen. together Amen. as a manner of some is. Yeah. But before you join a house, you need to have a relationship. Yeah. There may be one sitting here and you've never accepted Jesus Christ into your life. We have a lot of people that have joined church, but they've never made Christ the head of their life. Amen. The doors of the church are open, but most importantly, the doors of your heart are open to receive Christ as Lord and Savior. Is there one you want to come forth and make your petition known that Jesus is the Lord of your life? Yes. A lot of people want salvation. Oh, I believe in Jesus. But they don't want him to be Lord. Lord means he's your boss. He makes all your decisions. Who wants to accept Jesus today as Lord and Savior? come forth. Maybe you've accepted Christ and you're good, but you've been wandering around doing some things you ought not to be doing because you're not planted in the house of the Lord. Mount Zion's doors are open for you as well. Oh, I don't want to go to Mount Zion. That's all right. God has churches everywhere. Amen. New life is here visiting. Yes. But what is your heart telling you? Will you accept Christ? Will you join the body of believers at Mount Zion or at New Life? Salvation is available. Church location is available as well. Oh yeah, we'll sing a little bit of it. I won't sing it. But this is the most important part of the service Amen. after the word. An opportunity for you to make a choice about your eternal destination.